Hey fifth grade artists, are we ready to start art class? I am so excited to be having this art class with you today. So last week we discussed optical illusions and zentangle patterns. You used a Sharpie and a pencil to create these awesome patterns, but this week we're gonna shift directions. We're actually gonna be working on an artist study. And so an artist study is when we focus on one particular artist and look at their artwork and try to either recreate it or use the techniques that they use in our own artwork. So our artist for this week is Wayne Tebow. And Wayne was an American artist who did modern art. He actually worked in a diner in Arizona. And in that diner, he saw wonderful pastries, different kinds of American foods, and he decided that that's what he was gonna draw. So this week, we're gonna focus on his artwork called Birthday Cakes, and we're gonna see if we can recreate the birthday cake in a similar style. I know we won't have oil pastels at home, but we can always use crayons and a lot of blending. Are you ready to get started? Let's get started on our project fifth grade. So what we're going to need for this project are colored pencils or crayons, a piece of computer paper, and a pencil, and a pair of scissors, and a ruler if you have one. So I'm going to show you, if you have a ruler, how we're going to cut this. If you don't have a ruler, I will show you also how to cut it without using a ruler. For those of you that have a ruler, so we're measuring the smaller side of our paper. If it's eight and a half or eight, we want to find the eight and a half or eight point on this side to cut the top part of our paper. So since mine is nine inches and your computer paper will probably be eight and a half, I'm going to find nine inches on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the top. And then I'm gonna draw a line across. And now I know where to cut. So pretty simple. If you don't have a ruler, what you can do instead is take the corner of your paper, fold it, but don't fold it hard so there's a crease. Just gently take it over until you meet the edge of your paper. Then what you wanna do is take your pencil and draw a line. Now that's gonna be where you draw your line going down. So that would be where you would take a straight edge of something. If you don't have a ruler, it could be a book and you draw a straight line, and then you can cut it, that piece off. So I'm gonna cut, so I showed you two ways to do it. And take my pair of scissors and cut that section off. Okay, so we're gonna begin sketching. The first thing we need to do is draw a cylinder close to the top of our page. So I'm just gonna draw the beginning portion of our cylinder, which is going to be an oval. Then I want to draw the two sides coming down. And then the bottom is a curved line to match my top. So now that I have a nice cylinder going on, I want to draw the cake slice that's being taken out of my cylinder. So I'm gonna start, if this is my middle, I'm gonna go a little off to the side. I'm gonna start with one line going in and then the other line going out to make a triangle shape. I wanna bring the lines down because they're parallel to this. And then the same thing, I wanna match this shape on the bottom. So a line going in and a line going out. Then I want to erase these two lines because they don't exist anymore, right? The slice of cake has been taken out already. Now, from this point to this point, I need to draw a straight line. And now since we've opened up a slice of our cake, we want to draw the pieces of cake that are inside in between the frosting, right? So I'm gonna draw a straight line, a straight line, and then diagonal lines to connect. So that's one layer of cake. I'm going to do three in total on this side and then on the other side. So after I've drawn my six different sections of cake, I want to give my cake a plate. Wayne Tebow didn't do this, but we're gonna add a, a plate so our cake has something to rest on. So we have our cake, and then I want to draw the table 
and the background. So this is gonna be my back wall and this is going to be my table. For some garnish, which is what they put on top of cakes, which some people like to eat and other people like to pick off, I'm going to place a blueberry. So I'm gonna draw a circle, a little indentation where the blueberry's sitting. I want to add some mint leaves as well, just to give it a little dimension. Now I'm ready to get started on coloring since I have all the pieces of my cake. Now when you get started on your coloring, you wanna pick analogous colors for your project because Wayne Tebow did a lot of analogous colors on his project. So for my project, I'm gonna be working with yellow, green, orange, and a little bit of blue. So these are my analogous colors, my focus, right? They're color neighbors. So orange is next to yellow, yellow is next to green, and green is next to blue. This is my darkest tone. If you choose to do a different set of analogous colors, that's totally fine. Just know that when I talk in the video about using the yellow for my cake, you need to use the second analogous color that you've picked. So this is the first analogous color, second, third, fourth. So when I talk about yellow, whatever pair of analogous colors you've chosen, that would be the color you would use, whichever is second in line. And then when I talk about orange, you're gonna use whatever is first in line. And when I talk about green, you're gonna use whatever is third in line. And when I talk about blue, you're gonna use the darkest color that you have. So let's get started. Start with my lightest color, I'm just gonna color the whole cake. So there's my cake. Now the brightest part of my cake should be the top layer. So since I colored it in light yellow, I'm gonna color the bottom part darker using my golden yellow. Now I want to use the golden yellow just to do this section, just this side. I can even do this bottom part since I know there's a shadow. I just want to do the bottoms of the frosting. So I'm not coloring the whole thing, just the bottoms. There we go. Remember analogous colors, so I just used yellow. So the next color is going to be orange. And I want to deepen these sides a little bit more because this is where the shadow is casted. I can even add this orange on the inside of this slice as well. And on the corner. And down here. We're gonna go back in with our golden yellow or whatever darker color of your frosting that you chose. So if you have a light blue frosting, you wanna go in with a little dark blue and just kind of highlight some of the points. So I'm just drawing a little bit just to deepen up the color here and I wanna do it on this side as well. Now 
now comes the funky part. So he took a lot of analogous colors, like I said before, to kind of create more of a shadow and more texture to his painting. I'm going to take that green and I'm going to pop it in two places. I'm going to pop a little square right here, kind of like a little hook, like when you play hangman. And I'm going to pop some on the edges right here just to give it a little bit of dimension. I'm even going to pop some in between my cake slices. So what the green is actually doing is casting another shadow to give it more dimension. It's also playing off the colors that we already have. And if you were to take a picture, you would see some of these tones within a cake that maybe weren't normally there because of the pre-existing shadows. So now I also want to build up a little bit more this slice. Okay, and for the blue, I'm actually going to place it in the same places that I placed my green. Just lightly feathering it through and to really pop it off the page. So the colors really play with one another. Okay, so my cake is really starting to come alive. I want to create the shadow from where the slice's hole is. So I'm going to take a gray colored pencil, so everyone should be taking a gray. And what I'm going to do is draw a line so if this is my square, I want to do a fourth, draw that line down, past our cake. So from this point, we're going to draw it connecting to the edge of our cake. So it's casting a shadow. Now I want to take this colored pencil and lightly go over this section. want to deepen that shading with a little bit of blue. So again, I'm just feathering it through to make it look more like a shadow. I'm not choosing really some specific places, I'm just kind of going all over it. And now with my black colored pencil, I'm going to deepen it a little bit more by creating just a little bit of shading underneath the cake where the shadow is. I can also take this and pop it in the creases a little bit so it gives it more depth like it looks like the piece is actually missing. And there we go so we've casted a shadow now we've colored our cake now all that's left is our piece of fruit at the top so I'm going to color this green for the leaves and I'm going to make it a blueberry. Maybe even take a dark green to give it some shadows again so just coloring the edges that are closest to the bottom. Then taking a deep purple and making my blueberry. And going back in it with some dark blue. I want to take my black color pencil and cast a little shadow where the blueberry sits on my cake. And there we go. I can take some peach and color these slices peach so they're not just very intense white. There's our cake. So for the background, for our plate, you can just take a gray colored pencil and color the edges and let it fade into a light white. Just so it has the illusion that the plate exists there without actually having to color it in. Then you want to color the table one color and color your background another color so that it really pops out.
So now that everything's colored in, I realize I'm missing one more thing. I'm missing the shadow on this side of my cake. So what I'm going to do for that is start at the edge of my cake and draw a curved C that goes up about halfway on my cake. And then I want to color that section in. We're going to do the same thing and add some blue closest to my cake, that would be the darkest part, fading out and then closest to the bottom. And lastly, with our black coming in closest to the cake again and dragging it out just a tiny bit. And there we go, now our cake has two shadows, so this shadow in front and this shadow on the side. So if you have any questions on shading, watch this video again. I know it's complicated, but you guys can totally do it. I can't wait to see all your beautiful cakes that you make inspired by Wayne Tebow. Enjoy the coloring, have fun with it, and happy creating!